I just noticed, Danny, there's a couple of people that need to be admitted, Ellie Watkins and Jack Hanbury. They're public speakers for the items at Enclosure 6, so we've got other items to deal with before we bring them into the meeting. And that's we, been explained to them before they... Do we not bring they, them in for the entirety of the meeting? No, we bring them in for no. their items. And okay. You are now live. Us. We're now live. Charles, there we go. Thank you. Are we live, Danny? We are live, yep. Right. Pranamda, good afternoon uh, to everyone this afternoon. Welcome to this committee meeting of the Brecon Beacons National Park Authority Planning Committee on the 21st of March, 2023. Um, I'd like to, first of all, welcome um, some new members to our committee. It's great to have um, Professor John Hunt with us today. Great. Welcome, John. And Dr. Liz Brigerton as well, um, both new members appointed by the Welsh Government and it's a great pleasure that they are uh, on our planning committee uh, to assist in our considerations this afternoon. Um, I'd like to welcome too Charles Felgate who's joined us this afternoon to provide some additional legal advice in support of the work that's going on and our monitoring officer. It's good to have you with us Charles today. Um, I'd like to welcome our officers. Um, it's good to have their support. Um, we had a site meeting this morning which went to, to plan and I'm very pleased that they're here to facilitate our discussions and our considerations of the applications and other business this afternoon. And I'd like to also welcome anyone who might be viewing this either on a live stream basis or on a recording over the internet. It's good to have you with us. We do want to make this meeting as inclusive as possible and for everybody to feel that they have uh, an opportunity to uh, at least view it, if not express an interest in the applications as they're considered. So welcome for that. So that, uh, that's the introductions over. And we move into our formal matters for our agenda. And uh, members will have the agendas hopefully to hand. And we move on to enclosure one. Enclosure one is apologies for absence. And at this point, Danny, would you like to inform us as to who has given apologies for the meeting? Thank you. Chair, we only have two announcements today as we have almost a full house. We have apologies from Councillor Peter Baldwin and uh, Mr Craig Stevenson, who's a Welsh Government appointed member. Everybody else is in place, so we don't have any more to ask for. Thank you very much. Um, we will um, deal with a certain issue later on in the meeting when we come to look at the applications um, because we've had a site meeting this morning and we need to consider the implications of that for members who are not there. But we'll leave that until we come to the actual applications in hand. Um, OK, we'll move on to enclosure item two, um, which is chair's announcements. Um, I don't have a lot to say today. Um, but some messages really to pass back to staff. Um, these, are, these are members of staff who um, members may not have, uh, have met, but uh, I, I would like to wish a, a farewell to Christine Craddock, who's been Planning Services Support Advisor uh, for some seven, 17 and a half years uh, with the National Park Authority. And she's taking retirement uh, from the Planning Administration team. And hopefully, I've got down here that she'll have more time to enjoy gardening and her grandchildren. Well, wishful thinking perhaps, but we do wish you very well, Christine, if you're viewing this. And we hope that uh, retirement is a really enjoyable experience. And we thank you again for your contribution to the National Park. And then secondly, uh, a welcome. A welcome to James Banks, who's a new senior planning officer, who's been a planner for eight years. Uh, having mostly worked with Bridgend County Borough Council, but he's seen the light. He's seen how wonderful things are over in the park. And we're very pleased that he's come to join the team uh, and join with uh, Davina and uh, her crew to help us with our planning work here in the park. So welcome to James and hopefully you'll be with us to present an application uh, fairly soon. <clears throat> Um, I've been promised that the structural diagram of the planning service will be amended in light of these changes. And I know members are keen that we have information on who does what. And hopefully we can provide that 
uh, or Gareth, you can provide that for us in the foreseeable future so that members can know who's around and who they should come to these things. Any comments before I move on? Any, any other things to raise under chair's items? No, thank you very much. Okay, can we move on then to declarations of interest? And at this stage in the meeting, if anyone is aware of any of the items that we will be considering this afternoon, whether they are matters for um, discussion, noting, or indeed for decision, and now is the time to raise your hand and we can decide how we will deal with those later on. So thank you. Um, uh, Dr. Liz Pickerton, your hand is raised. Um, yes, um, for um, the, the, the fringe report, um, I've declared an interest and uh, so it's enclosure seven um, fringe report item three, um, um, one, one of the items there. Um, Thank you very much. This is a matter, I believe, for, for noting. So I'll just ask the monitoring officer to confirm what the situation is where you have an interest and it's a matter for noting. Uh, thank you, Chair. Three, you, Chair. Chair, it's not a matter for deliberation by the authority. It's just a note only. Uh, obviously, it's a matter for the member whether she wishes to stay or leave the, uh, the meeting, but there's no decision to be made. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, I don't see any other hands raised at the moment, unless anybody can see any. Um, so I will take that, that no other members have any declaration of interest. Sorry, yes? Chair, apologies. Uh, for some reason, I've uh, I've lost my overall view of uh, the screen. And I can right. I can see our colleague, Councillor Jeremy Davis, but I can't see anybody else. And I have no idea whether you can see me. But uh, I should uh, declare an interest... Um, on um, agenda item um, uh, three, Penhill Farm, Talgarth, in terms of uh, um, a family association with the applicant. And so is that an application then that you feel you've got a prejudicial interest in or, or just one um, that you want to declare? It's, it's, it should have, it's something that I should have uh, raised earlier. I, um, and uh, I think it, on balance that would, be, that would be wise, yeah. Right, in which case, I would suggest, well, Mark, would you just like to confirm um, what, what uh, Councillor Powell's position is in relation to that? Um, thank you, Chair. That's, uh, that's very kind of you. Uh, yes, Chair. Um, obviously, the, the test of a, a, a personal and prejudicial interest, uh, whether the, the reasonably minded member of the public would consider that um, that member may have a, an interest in the matter greater than uh, than uh, a general member. Um, my advice would be to Councillor Powell to declare an interest and uh, leave the meeting. And uh, I've, I've put the uh, the link to the form in the chat, Chair. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair, and to the monitoring officer for his uh, advice. Thank you, Councillor Powell. OK, well, we move now on to enclosure four, which are uh, two sets of minutes, uh, enclosure four, is the minutes for the last meeting of this committee, which was held on the 24th of January. Uh, hopefully you have those minutes in front of you, pages one, two, and three. Has anybody got any comments to make in relation to those minutes? <coughs> Councillor Powell, is that an old hand? Or is that it is indeed, I'm about to lower it. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Has anybody else got any um, comments to make on relation to the accuracy of the minutes in front of us? In which case I'll be asking for somebody to propose uh, that we adopt the minutes, somebody who was in attendance at, the, at that meeting, and somebody to second. I've got Councillor Roderick proposing and Councillor Hugh Williams seconding. Um, thank you both. And I think we need to take a, uh, a vote on this one, don't we, Danny? So perhaps we could have that put forward in front of us. Yeah, I'm going to try and launch it now because normally I rely on the trustee, Mrs. Pashley, but unfortunately she's poorly. So bear with. There we go. It's live on your screens now. Vote in and, the relevant boxes. And it may well be in your chat if it's not on the front of yeah. your screen. Certainly it is on mine. You have to go into your chat box and you'll find in the chat box there is a choice 
press the button for the choice that you want to make and then submit the vote and it will go through to Danny. There we go. And that's obviously, the few members that weren't in attendance at the last meeting have abstained, and the rest of the members have agreed the minutes. So that's them approved. Thank you very much, members. Um, the next set of minutes is the minutes of the local access forum. Um, this was held some time ago, actually. We tend to be almost one step removed, really, from um, the, these, these minutes. Um, but it is a, a useful opportunity, really, for us as a planning committee to have a, an oversight of what is going on with our uh, local access, which is uh, a body set up sort of alongside the National Park uh, to, to discuss our public rights of way uh, and deal with those issues. Uh, and we have two um, officers who very much function as the link people between um, the authority and that group. Um, and that is Richard Ball, who's the Secret Access Secretary, and uh, Ivan Jones, who is a, a member of staff who also works on, on public rights of way. So if you're interested in follow, finding out more information, particularly for new members who may uh, not be aware of some of the issues, uh, the time is probably not to raise those issues at this meeting, but to talk to either Richard or Avian uh, you know, at your leisure uh, later to follow up anything that might have arisen. Um, we are very pleased that our local access forum do take uh, a real thorough interest in the rights of way. And you'll notice as you go through the, the minutes, um, uh, the, the areas that they have covered. Um, again, it's not really for us now to get into any of those issues, but it's really good for us to note those. So um, as these are for noting, I will only ask for a show of hands if, if anybody uh, is unhappy with noting them. So um, has anybody um, wished to express any concerns in relation to these minutes or shall we take them as being noted? I can't see any hands raised, can you? No, thank you. No, me either. Thank you very much, members. Um, so we'll move on then to our substantive items on our agenda um, under enclosure six. In closure six, there are two applications, uh, items one and two, which relate to Dana Bulk, uh, a farm where we have uh, recently had a site visit. And then we have one more item under, under item three, Penhreo Farm. But let's deal, first of all, with Dana Bulk. Um, the case officer is Lisa Hughes. And before we get into this, um, I just asked the monitoring officer to come in and confirm the situation in relation to members who did not attend the site visit this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yes, Chair. Um, I've given advice to uh, those members that in accordance with the planning protocol, um, there is uh, some risk presented um, for those members should they decide to stay in the meeting and take an active part in its determination, as they obviously won't have the same level of information that those members who attended the site visited, visited today. And therefore, my advice to those members is at the beginning of the meeting uh, to consider that item that they uh, declare that they were not in attendance and that they uh, leave the meeting take no further part in it and are called back in once the uh, those matters have been uh, considered and determined by the uh, planning committee. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, we've heard the advice. I've got three hands raised. Um, uh, Councillor Jeremy Davis, do you want to speak uh, to this? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, I couldn't make the site meeting this morning, so I think I'll have to withdraw myself because it wouldn't be fair for me to make a decision if I didn't go to the site visit. Thank you very much. Um, Scott Emmanuel? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I also couldn't make the site meeting, so I won't be taking part in any of the determinations on this item. Thank you. And uh, Liz Bickerton? It's exactly the same position. I wasn't able to be present this morning, so I will be withdrawing um, for this item from the meeting. Thank you very much. 
and we will make arrangements so that all three of you are informed when we get to the end of this item so that you can join us for the following one. So, As advised, uh, Chair, I'll, I'll remove them now. I've entered the, I'm allowed to enter the other two members of the public for speaking, so they are now present in the meeting. And I shall now remove Councillor Davis, Councillor Emmanuel, and Dr Liz Bickerton, when I can find her in the list. There we are. There we are. We're ready to go again, Chair. Thank you very much. Well, welcome to those who have joined us for this particular item. Um, you're very welcome to uh, be involved in our determination of this application, these applications this afternoon. And uh, for those who will be involved in say in speaking, um, we, we do like to give people opportunity to participate in our deliberations. Um, but first, um, we will have a presentation from the case officer um, uh, 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 about the application. Uh, Lisa Hughes is the case officer for this application, and she will give an overview of the application and its context so that we can understand what it's all about. There will be an opportunity then for members to raise any questions in relation to the substance of the application and what it is uh, uh, before we have our opportunity for uh, public speaking and then members to debate. So we take this strictly in accordance with that sequence and we encourage members to only participate by asking uh, straightforward questions in the first part of our deliberations before we have our public speaking and then the debate following that. So Lisa, Welcome this afternoon. Perhaps you would like to give us an introduction to the application in hand. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I will uh, just look to share my screen now. Should be happening, I hope. Can you all see a map? Yeah, thank yeah. you. So, Prinhounsar, good afternoon, members. I have two applications to bring today due to a public interest. The applications are linked and rely upon each other to be implemented, and therefore I will present them together. However, they will be for consideration by you as separate items on the agenda. Paragraph 2.5 of the uh, planning reports that you've been provided with should have been amended to update that the applications were further considered at committee in July 2022 and following confirmation from Welsh Government that they did not wish to call in the applications, the decisions were issued on the 22nd of September 2022. There then followed a legal challenge brought by a third party and the judicial review quashed the permissions on the 31st of January this year for the reason that the committee was misdirected regarding an in-person site visit. The result of the quashing of the decisions is that the matters are required to be redetermined. So I will just now move through some of the slides. So the proposal for application 18931 is to cover an existing concrete yard adjoining an existing livestock building. Application 18928 is to cover an existing handling yard which lies immediately to the north of the concrete pad. The roof structures will match the eaves and ridge of the existing livestock building. The handling yard is required to be dug down to bring it to the same level as the existing concrete pad. The roof structures will be contained within two metre high concrete panel walls to the north and west and to ensure the containment of dirty water. So this is the covered yard. This is the sheep handling. Sorry, did someone speak? OK, I'll carry on. Um, uh, Welsh Government have demonstrated a clear expectation to reduce agricultural uh, pollution and to improve water quality across Wales. 
There is without doubt a greater expectation from farmers to consider their holdings in regard to agricultural pollution and to apply measures that reduce any risk. There has been grant funding available to provide roofing over slurry and silage pits, livestock gathering, feeding and handling areas. This provides higher welfare facilities, but crucially reduces the risk of agricultural runoff. Danneborch is a farm centred around a late 16th century grade two listed farmhouse, which is here. The farm buildings are located to the west and east of the formerly abandoned farmhouse, which underwent rehabilitation to a dwelling following planning permission or permission in 2014. The site is in the community of Krakorny and located in countryside as defined in the LDP. The application site is accessed through a traditional farmyard to the west of the dwelling. A modern bungalow, which, is, which has traditionally been part of the farm, is located to the east of the access. There is a traditional stone barn, which is curtilage listed, to the southeast of the proposed structure. This barn is already seen in the context of two modern barns, one immediately to the west of it, and further to the south on the opposite side of the road. This is a view from the west of the proposed structures. With the existing livestock building, they will adjoin on the right and Danable Farmhouse beyond. The River Hondi is approximately 600 metres to the southwest, into which a spring rising approximately 60 metres to the southeast of the site runs. The Hondi joins the Mono at Pandy and from there joins the River Wye at Monmouth. The site is within the River Wye catchment. This is a view from the east, with the second photograph taken after the development had commenced prior to the quashing of the first planning permissions. Concern has been raised by third parties regarding the farm operating an intensive livestock unit and how the proposals will facilitate or facilitate to intensify that use. The authority has sought an independent appraisal of the existing operations at the farm, which the proposal does not intend to intensify, but to improve both for animal husbandry and environmental reasons. We have received late third party correspondence that considers the development proposed will intensify the numbers of sheep farmed at this location with consequential pollution of the nearby watercourse and references a report evidencing overgrazing, soil cover loss and sediment build up at the farm. The correspondence considers the appropriate assessment carried out by the authority in May 2022 does not assess the in combination effects of grazing with the hard standing and it asserts that either the development will introduce a higher stocking level which will lead to further stripping of the surface area towards the watercourses and increased amounts of nutrient rich manure and or the hard standing will be an additional source of runoff pollution to be measured alongside the existing pollution sources. The letter also stated that NRW updated their guidance in January 2023 and no reference to that is found in the report. The National Park Authority have previously had it confirmed from NRW that they did not issue any updated, updated guidance in January 2023. The web page was refreshed then but the guidance is that published in version 3 in July 2022 and on which basis the appropriate assessment for the current recommendation has been carried out. Since the development proposal is not to introduce higher stocking and is to cover an existing hard standing and sheep handling area and therefore prevents runoff pollution, the appropriate assessment of May 2022 concluded subject to condition that there would be no likely significant effects on the SAC. Furthermore, an updated appropriate assessment carried out in March 2023 on which NRW have also been consulted and raised no objection, concludes that adverse effects on the integrity of the site, as a, which is the River Wye SAC, as a result of approving the planning applications, can be avoided by the application of planning conditions, which include securing a drainage plan, implementation, and that the buildings are not used for the housing of livestock. It is key to bear in mind that the proposals are not to facilitate any increase in livestock numbers on the land and that farming practices are regulated outside the planning regime. 
The legal line of public footpath 52931 passes between the proposed structures and the existing buildings to the east. While there appears to be some doubt that the footpath has ever followed this route and there are currently obstructions on it, these are historical and include a wall. The proposed building does not obstruct the footpath. BBMPA Public Rights of Way as Highway Authority for the path have been consulted and have no objection. They do, however, state that no work should be undertaken on the footpath which would prevent its use by the public or make its use inconvenient. A suitably worded condition will therefore be attached to any approval. Development will sit within this area here. So it's two new roof structures coming off this existing building. It's worth pointing out on this side that this is Little Floygy, which you will have seen reference to in the reports. It will now follow a number of slides with photographs into the site from the public footpaths in the vicinity. The uh, route that the, the following photographs sort of follow starts around here, comes out along this public footpath to Strawberry Wood Barn, back through um, and past Little Floygy, which is here, up, and then we join the Offers Dyke path, which is a, follows a, a roadway, comes down here, which then we transfer onto a sunken lane, and we end the ream of photographs somewhere around here. That is, so sorry, we're starting on the Offers Dyke footpath at the moment. So we're just above the site, you've got build, the roof structures will be going here. Again, roof structures in here. This is now from the footpath towards Strawberry Wood Barn, and you will just see some roof just along here, I believe, from this photograph. Similarly, a little bit further along, most of the views from here will, will be roof. Very little, I think, in addition, would be seen from this location and even less from here. This is uh, further on down as we approach Little Floygy and you would see some, some of the gable end there on the buildings. And this is near Little Floygy itself. This, this area is to be planted with native trees and there is to be a hedgerow along the bank at the top of the back of the building. But back now we're on the Offers Dyke path again and we have the listed farmhouse here. The roof structures would look something like that. And now we are on a, the, the sunken lane and this is the view from the east. You'd have the two roof structures looking like that. This is taken from the public highway. Um, again, probably one of the most prominent views that you'll get and it will be roof structure and some of the Yorkshire boarding. And views from further away, we've got this one taken from Little Floygy, which is a listed building across the valley and Danibor is around about where my cursor is here. And from Kumyoi Church, somewhere along here, and that concludes the pictures. Um, in conclusion, any increase in the concentration of organic materials discharged directly or indirectly into the River Wye catchment has the potential to increase phosphate levels, causing further deterioration of the special features of the SAC, which the SAC is designated for, and which includes the natural beauty and wildlife of the park. The structures are not to facilitate increased numbers of livestock on the farm. The proposed covering of the existing handling area and yard will ensure that surface water will not be contaminated with increased phosphates, other nutrients and silts, and therefore ensure that negative impacts on, quality, on water quality are avoided. The officer recommendation is to permit both applications. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Lisa, for a very clear uh, presentation to us. Um, Charles Felgate, you've got your hand raised. Would you like to speak to us before we move on from there? 
Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Just to clarify two matters in particular um, that arise. First of all, um, in relation to the reports that are before you, I did notice when I was preparing for this meeting that paragraph 2.5 um, only refers to the initial consideration of this matter by the um, authority. It doesn't refer to the matter being reconsidered um, on the 26th of July 22 or the subsequent judicial review proceedings that um, ensued as a result of that. Um, so I just thought it was important to mention that. L Lisa did refer to that in her presentation, but I just wanted to mention specifically that it wasn't covered in the report. Um, the second issue, I think, is that Lisa's presentation um, uh, obliquely referred to the listed status of the farmhouse at Danibolch. Um She did mention that there was curtilage listing of other buildings, um, but it is set out in your report in, in quite some detail. I just wanted to clarify that that building was, uh, the farmhouse building was um, listed, and that as a result of that, the duties in Section 66 of the Planning List of Buildings Act apply. And that duty is to have special regard to any harm um, to features of architectural and historic interest, or indeed the setting of uh, that list of building um, in reaching your deliberation. It might be helpful, I think, perhaps if Lisa could set out her views for you in relation to whether there is any harm and the extent to which that duty might apply. Thank you, Charles. Would you like to respond, Lisa, just set out the relationship with the listed building in particular? Thank you. Um... The, the farmhouse at Danibor is the closest to the proposed development, but due to the existing buildings, there's a, a modern um, modern building between what is proposed and the uh, listed building. There will be little change in the way the building is experienced in its surroundings. It's considered that although there will be a minor change to the setting of the listed farmhouse, it will not have a harm, the development will not have a harmful impact upon it. Is that okay, Charles, or do you want to see uh, it shown on the on the site plan? No, uh, it, it, perhaps we could go to the site plan just just to be abundantly clear. But um, but uh, otherwise, I'm I'm happy with that. So, so if you could screen share again, sorry, Lisa, screen share and just just show it on the on the plan might be quite helpful. So, this here is the listed farmhouse. This is an, an existing modern agricultural building. This is the stone curtilage listed barn. And the proposed roof structures are here. Could we also just show a plan showing the relationship of the um, the other two listed buildings that are referred to in the report? I think it's, uh, sorry, I can't remember the name of both of them, Little Floigi and um, the other one. So it's, I don't have a more zoomed in plan however uh Chloin kellen would be around about oh sorry let me go along a bit further we've got stanton Hang on. yeah little floigie would be around about here um Kumyoi church would be around about here and then there's a barn at pont Reese powell that you can't see the site from at all and that is around about there OK, that's very helpful. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. Well, um, members, all the members attending now have had the opportunity of visiting the site and seeing the context themselves. Um, but we have a report in front of us and there may well be matters in there that need clarification uh, and any other things before we go into any consideration of the application. So if members have got any questions of Lisa in in relation to the facts contained in the report or indeed the relationship between this site and other buildings and so forth, then now is the chance to do that. Would anybody like to raise any matters? Thank you. I can see, I can see uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, I can see John Hunt's hand raised. John. I think you're probably muted. Is that better? 
Am I coming through? Why don't you just start? If you'd like to start it again, that would be great. Okay. Following um, our visit this morning and some discussions there, in relation to the water tanks, what level, I'm new to the process of consideration of these applications, in terms of technical advice on our remit, looking at wa the water storage, what technical advice is there that we should be influencing on sediment traps within the water storage and what guarantee are we given that there will be sufficient sediment trapping to prevent siltation um, getting into the water courses and do we have any officer expertise to say we can plant guarantee we can give permission for this without risk of imperiling um, non uh, silt escape or is that down to nrw so um the the roof structures are to collect the the rainwater runoff which will be stored in these tanks here which will then be used for um the livestock on the farm and for other water usage that the farm may require uh, any additional rainwater runoff from the roofs will go to um, a land drain Due to the size of the roofs, um, the the proposal is um, is what one that will have to be approved by the um, suds approval body. Um, so there will be a separate application going in for that to to Monmouthshire. Um, there were no there's no requirement for sediment traps here. The, this is water which will be running off the roofs. No other surface water should be able to get into the building itself. Um, what any limited um, wet waste arising from the any livestock whilst they're being handled in the yards um, is to go to a um, foul water tank which will be disposed of off site but due to the separation the very reason that this proposal is put forward it's the separation of rainwater from the waste um, any um, waste arising from within inside the or beneath the covers of the buildings there will be very dry in nature um, it's to be treated as, as farmyard manure but what is what there is that is wet and which will be very limited will go to um, an on-site tank and that will be pumped off and taken away and dealt with um, under separate legislation Thank or you. codes of practice yeah thanks thank you very much lisa i can't see any other hands raised by members, unless Danny can see anybody else. So I suggest we move on to the opportunity we have for public speaking. And Danny, perhaps you'd like to just confirm who we have um, uh, speaking against and in favour of this application. Yeah, we have Mark Lloyd speaking against. Unfortunately, he's not able to attend. So he has sent a copy of his very brief script uh, that will be read out by me. Uh, we have uh, Jack Hambry, who will also speak against, and following him, we have Ellie Watkins, who is the agent who will be speaking for the application. So would you like me to start with Mr Lloyds? Well, I'd just, just like to say um, we we do have a three-minute rule, which we stick to absolutely. Um, yep. So, Danny, when you read it, read the statement out, we'll make sure that it's uh, uh, contained within that three minutes. So, need need to read reasonably swiftly in order to. Chair, I think I would have to read extremely slowly to drag this out to three right. minutes, but it is a very brief. <laughs> right. Uh... <laughs> Thank you very much, um, and Mr. Hambry, we're very pleased to have you with us today. And uh, but again, I, you know, we we do have this three minute rule, so um, it won't be a surprise to you. We we have to do that in order to. Um, to take stock of, of our time uh, this afternoon and indeed for Ellie Watkins who will be speaking uh, as the agent for the application. So um, Danny do you want to start with the uh, with the representations made by Mark Lloyd? I will do this is in relation to application 2018928FUL. Um, Mark asked that we raise the fact that the farm continues to cause pollution and contribute to flooding and is an eyesore in an otherwise beautiful valley. Expansion of its animal holding facilities would appear to facilitate the continuation and potential extension of its appalling practices. The end. Finished. Done. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mark, for putting your representations into us. 
And then next I'd welcome um, Mr. Hanbury to join us and to speak. Are you there, Mr. Hanbury? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hopefully you'll appear on my machine. I'm afraid I can only see a few people, but I'm sure when you start speaking, you'll you'll materialise, as it were. Um, pay extra not to see me. <laughs> and so we have three minutes uh, to speak to us uh, starting from now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm Jack Hanbury from the Pontypool Park Estate. This is the third time that this joint application has been submitted to the planning committee. The two previous times the consent was quashed by judicial review. Uh, to quash a consent isn't a mere wrist slap, it's a formal declaration that the consent was illegal. And yet this is a third application resubmitted, seemingly unchanged, seven weeks after the previous consent was declared illegal. So what does this say about the National Park's procedures and its respect for law? This application site is egregious for its perhaps surprising land management. The number of sheep on the holding, the density of stocking, the soil erosion, the runoff, the substantial buildings in relation to the farm acreage, the heritage impact, the environmental impact, the impact on the YSAC, the obstruction of the footpath, all make this farm management and the applications highly unusual. The two successful challenges are not surprising. It is surprising, however, that the National Park has allowed matters to get to this stage and may not adequately have regulated the previous consents, nor indeed enforced against breaches. This third application should be dismissed. It does no service to the National Park, nor to sheep farming in Wales. Members of the committee are aware of the statutory purpose of the National Park. I suggest that the National Park should not entertain any application which undermines our message that red meat production in Wales is sustainable and that our customers may buy it with confidence. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hanbury, for your contribution, um, which will be taken into account when we come to our deliberations. Thank you very much. Uh, and finally, we welcome Ellie Watkins, who will be speaking as the uh, agent in uh, support of this application. Thank you. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, yeah. good, good afternoon, members of the committee. Thank you for your time this morning, and I apologise that you have to hear this matter again. Quite frankly, a waste of all of our time. This matter has been decided not once, but twice already. Everyone each time reaching the correct answer. We seem to be a victim of, to those who have little understanding of the National Park and frankly have more resources than the applicants and actually the council themselves. Thank you to Lisa Hughes and the planning department for their continued work in relation to this matter and Lisa for her continued and unrelenting support of the proposals now entering their third year and third decision. Ultimately, we are deciding the two matters in one here, but the principle remains the same. Lisa has provided to you a detailed presentation and that you have now had the benefit of seeing the site. These applications are for a yard and a sheep handling cover are as straightforward in principle as they seem. There is no ulterior motive. They are simply structures to cover the existing yard areas. These are an expense to the applicants that actually offer no financial gain to the business. The benefits of the structures to my clients are twofold. Firstly, they improve animal welfare by providing a clean and dry facility to work in when they are, when they are handling sheep and uh, loading and un unloading lorries. And secondly, and integrally, these structures will reduce the risk of agricultural pollution. The buildings will prevent rainwater reaching the surface, mixing with the farmyard manure, as you saw today, and it will prevent the wet, wet muck and partial slurry that, that you saw this morning. Um, and it will create a dry area which will not generate runoff. The drainage, separation of clean and dirty water have been considered and included, including rainwater storage, which is Sud's best practice. I cannot stress enough that these buildings are not to enable my clients to increase livestock numbers. They are simply to improve animal welfare when handling livestock they already have. 
the business, as you saw today, could not function without those yards. How could they possibly operate their sheep enterprise if that facility was then fully housed with sheep? Yian Williams, an undisputed industry expert, has inspected the business on behalf of the council and found it to be reasonable and suitably operated. Any suggestion that my client's conduct is inappropriate um, is firstly unfounded and it's secondly not a planning matter. Um, these applications are not complicated and they are not a detriment to the National Park. If anything, they are to improve the parks for, by reducing runoff, like many other applications being granted for the same across Wales. They are on an existing and established farmyard. They are not new development in the open countryside. Crucially, there is already an existing livestock building which can entirely screen the southern elevation, combined with a large amount of proposed tree planting. These structures will be more screens than hundreds of similar buildings within the region. My clients, having lived their entire lives, have fallen victim to those with more resources, more time and little understanding of agriculture and its essential part in the National Park and its landscape. Despite extreme tribulation to both my clients and the Council, the recommendation is still to approve these proposals. The benefits are clear and ultimately that is what you need to consider. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your contributions. And we will take those into account when we come to have our deliberations on this application. So thank you very much. Um, so we now move to the opportunity for members to discuss the merits of the application in front of us. And I just remind members that uh, what we're considering is the planning application in front of us. We're not considering perhaps some of the wider issues which may have been raised uh, in relation to um, the operation of this farm, we're, we're, we're looking specifically at the proposals in front of us in these applications and the material planning considerations that relate to those proposals. So um, if, if, any, if you'd like to put your hands up, please, if you would like to uh, make comments on what you've seen this morning and what you've heard this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, Charles Felgate, first of all, before we move into that debate, you'd like to Chair, add, thank would you? you? Very, Chair, thank you very much. Um, Lisa did mention in her report that she had received um, last minute correspondence uh, in relation to the matter, um, and she suggested that that correspondence had said two things. First of all, it suggested that the appropriate, appropriate assessment that had been carried out was defective. That letter also noted that um, NRW had not commented on the in-combination effect of increased grazing, um, along with damaged field surface runoff or erosion of silt and manure pollution, um, in addition to the provision of drainage within the site. And they referred to a cross-compliance report that was um, provided to uh, Natural Resources Wales in respect of that matter. Um, we were hoping to have an update from NRW and uh, it has arrived during the course of the meeting. So I think it might just be helpful for officers to um, update uh, members in relation to that. Um, I believe Davina's um, got the, the information, so it might be best for her to run through it. Uh, I don't know if you've got it, Lisa, whether you want to, uh, but uh, whoever you think is appropriate. I think Davina's probably had more sight of it than, than I have, so I'll happily let Yeah, I, I, I think it arrived while you were talking, to be fair, so uh, you, you probably uh, can't do two things at once. OK, thank you, Charles. Davina, perhaps you'd like to read out the NRW response. Thank you very much. OK, it's, it's quite a long email, so right. I could read it out or oh, I no. could summarise. I think a summary would be fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so first point is they've had a look at the report of farm um, cross-compliance breach and they have said that that was uh, something supplied to Welsh Government rural payments um, as part of an investigation. Um, this is not a planning matter and is dealt with separate to the planning system or any planning application. So they've got no further planning comments to make in regard to the cost compliance information that was circulated. Then in terms of reference to the fish legal letter and the in combination effects, they say that they have provided comments on the applications um, in the context that they understand that there'll be no increase in stock numbers. We understand that these measures were uh, to be as a betterment to the existing situation to help reduce surface soil erosion and surface water runoff, which could contain nutrient-rich manure. 
And it says the planning application submitted in our view do not have a direct impact on the condition or compliance issues of the rest of the farm stroke holding, which is being or has been dealt with outside of the planning remit. We have provided appropriate comments on the proposed structures in these planning applications subject to the red outline application boundary and the information submitted in support of the proposals. We have no further comments to make on the applications or the appropriate assessments. Thank you very much, um, Davina. Um, so we've had um, that comment in relation to the NRW, and now we move on to the opportunity for members uh, to come back. Unless, Charles, you've got anything else to say in relation to that response? Do you just want to sort of confirm what the implications might be from a planning perspective on what they've said? Thank you, Chair. That's fine. I, I think the response was pretty much as officers expected um, and that the two issues were really separate um, and distinct. Um, here we have a situation where there seems to be confirmation of a betterment um, and uh, that's the way in which we should treat it, uh, particularly with the emphasis on no increase in stock numbers. And there is indeed a planning condition, I think it's condition number four, um, which um, prevents those stock numbers from increasing. Thank you very much. Right, I have uh, Councillor Roderick. I think you're muted, Councillor Roderick. Uh, thank you, Chair. I, I believe John was in front of me. Um, oh, was he? Well, well uh, I'll, 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 I'll take you first as I've got you on my list first. Uh, all Councilor, right. If that's all right. <laughs> okay, well, um, <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Chair. And thank you to everybody that was involved this morning. It was a pretty comprehensive uh, site visit. Um, and it was explained very simple to us. Now, um, I have seen many of these um, sites being done, and to me, it's a win-win situation because it is keeping the uh, not only the livestock but the operators dry, uh, and it is avoiding water runoff because, as you saw this morning, there is surplus water and mud and, and urine um, around the scene. Um, which when covered, that is obviously going to stop it. So um, on those grounds, I said, because what we what we are judging in front of us is simply for the two, sh the covering the two, collect the two collecting, the one collecting yard and the uh, one sheep handling system. So I have no reservations myself, uh, Chair, whatsoever in proposing that this um, application be carried. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Roderick. Um, I have Councillor Ian McIntosh. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, we've heard that there's going to be no adverse impact on the listed buildings. Um, we've obviously heard that um, this is going to reduce pollution. It's, it's a betterment. Um, I'm disappointed that we've been put in a position where we've had to waste time and particularly taxpayers' money on a on a site visit and you know having three attempts to get this this put through um it seems to be a, a, a typical sort of farming application really and i'm i'm disappointed that some of the comments we've had from objectors to me indicate that they don't really know what it means to run a working farm basically so i mean for the same reasons that i won't repeat what what councillor edwin said but I, I agree with him other points i just want to raise is that it's been claimed that this is going to have an adverse impact on other viewpoints around the area well you're not going to be able to see it from these other places around the area so for these reasons i'm more than happy to, to second the recommendation that this um this is granted permission obviously subject to the conditions um contained within the application thank you chair thank you very much councillor mcintosh um john hunt uh, thank you chair um, just a question rising out of something that Ellie said earlier, I believe, that the covering of the yard area would facilitate dry loading of lorries. Now, transport and lorries wasn't something that was discussed at the site visit today. And having seen the site, I'm at a loss to understand how such vehicular access to the area could be achieved given the nature of the access we saw this morning. So is that a, a factor? Is vehicular access for large transport something that is part of the planning that we've not picked up on? I can try and answer that in the first instance, if that's okay, Chair. Um, yes, we fine, we may not need to get Ellie into the conversation. Yes. Um, 
this is something that must be happening already. You've got um, livestock coming to the farm and from the farm. And because this proposal proposes no increase in livestock numbers at the farm, those traffic movements simply don't come into this consideration. Um, that's what I would have to say in that matter. If, if there's anybody else who's got a, another view, then uh, they may come in. Councillor Roderick, did you want to make a comment in relation to that particular issue? Or is it an old hand? You're muted. Sorry, Chair, it was an old hand. All right, um, thank you. Hey, thank you. Yeah, OK, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Hugh Williams. Yes, thank you, Chair. Lisa, can you reinforce, can you remind us again on the effluent containment uh, and how that is to be done? But also there was mention this morning, and it's in the planning, about uh, an area planted with native trees and, hedge, and hedges, which would help with, with the visual impact. Can you explain where those are, uh, if you would, please? Absolutely, I can. I will start with the um, the area for planting. So <clears throat> this this whole area here is to be planted with trees and yes. there's a native hedgerow to go along the back of the um where the handling yard cover is. I'm not seeing Thank you for pointing this out to us somewhat belatedly. I uh, will start sharing the screen. Uh, is anything happening? Not yeah. yeah, we're we're in business. Okay, <laughs> uh, we'll try again. So um, the area for planting is this area here. Um, this will be the, the the trees, the native trees that to be planted, and there is a uh, native hedgerow to come all along the back of the the handling area here. Right. Um, oh, sorry. And the other question was in relation to the drainage. Um, the, the, the foul drainage, as I've said, there will be very, very little effluent um, because once the building's enclosed, the reason we go, we're going to have these concrete walls along here, which as you saw today on the site visit, we're open to the field. These concrete walls will prevent any runoff and it will be limited in, in any event but it's to contain anything um th th there won't be an awful lot of of effluent produced at all um but the sheet mark from when those areas the handling yard collecting yard are being used um will be scraped out by telehandler and bucket and added to the farmyard manure heap and that will be dealt with in accordance with uh, good um practice uh, it will be a nominal amount um, then there would, is to be a concrete effluent tank uh, installed beneath the um, the, the yards that we, that are proposed and that will capture any dirty water from both of the areas um, the tank will be 3800 liters it will deal it, it will be enough for um, both of those areas and when the tank is to be emptied it will be pumped out and taken off site and disposed of accordingly um so that is all what i have to say about the effluent and have, have i answered the question yes uh, and it's reinforced the fact that uh, rainwater and the effluent water are separated collected and dealt with separately uh, in a different way that's correct yeah the the entire reason for the proposal is to keep those two things separate yeah. which evidently they're not at the moment and and should go sorry going back to the area that planted, if those trees failed, what is Plan B? The condition uh, will be if you just bear with me for a second. If I can just try and find the conditions proposed. <clears throat> that any plants, trees or shrubs that fail in the first five years after planting shall be replaced in the next available planting season on a like for like basis. So for five years at every at, 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 um, ill health or whatever, if a, if a tree fails, it needs to be replaced. Um, so that's that's how, how we look to establish that, that area satisfactorily. And that will apply both to the hedgerow and to the um, 
the, the tree planting that's going in. Thank you. And thank you for the comprehensive information this morning as well. Uh, very worthwhile visit uh, to you, you and your fellow officers. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good. Thank you, yep. Councillor Williams. Uh, Councillor Powell, you've got your hand raised, I believe. Good, David. Thank you, Chair. And uh, I'd like to join Councillor Hugh Williams in, um, uh, in thanking the officer team for uh, the site visit this morning. I, I found myself uh, on um, another side of uh, of the debate regarding the the, um, the the value of the site visit from uh, one or two councillors uh, uh, who've spoken earlier, I thought it was useful. Um, I, I raised the matter back in July, and I know that the the matter um, fed into subsequent processes. So I thought that it was a really useful visit, um, clarifying the the purpose of the applications. Uh, and and also um, giving us an opportunity to to weigh up the the, the benefits uh, that will flow from this as against any any um, uh, disbenefits that that, that that there might be. And the most important thing it seems to me uh, is that it uh, will make a significant contribution to one of the most important priorities uh, for us in the national park and the wider Wales, which is to contribute to uh, to the health of our rivers in terms of addressing uh, potential runoff um, and uh, and doing so in a, in a proportionate way and in a way that's in accordance with um, Welsh Government priorities for the development of, of agriculture. I also thought it was useful to see um, in the context of the holding the, um, uh, the contribution that rainwater harvesting will make because we talk a lot about our natural resources, but one of the most important, both for, for human welfare and livestock, is access to uh, to clean, safe water. And uh, and obviously, in the context of a holding that is not um, supplied by, as I understand it, by uh, um, mains water, but is uh, reliant on on um, on other sources through a borehole and so on. Uh, being more resource efficient is obviously going to be quite important. So, um, so I thought that that was 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 a very helpful aspect to things. Um, getting a sense um, by being on site this morning and having the the uh, clear um, exposition that we had from the the case officer um, in the context of the the landscape views that we had. Uh, I the, any concerns that I previously had uh, have been um, allayed and I shall be uh, supporting the recommendation when we come to a vote and I said thank you chair and to everyone this morning for making uh, that site visit available I thought it played a useful part in coming to uh, an appropriate outcome thank you Jochen Bauer. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Powell. Yes, I, I agree. It was a very useful visit, in my opinion, as well. Um, Charles Felgate, you've still got your hand raised. Has that come back on another issue? Um, it has come back on another issue, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I just, while I was listening to what, what members had to say, I just wanted to double check, particularly given the scrutiny that's being applied to this application, that I had said the right thing in relation to the Section 66 duty earlier. And I think I may have, have, have not quite repeated the, the wording of the legislation. So for the avoidance of any doubt, I think it's sensible that I repeat it. Um, the Section, section, section 66 duty is to have special regard to the desirability of preserving the list of building or its setting, or any features of special architectural or historic interest which it possesses. I think I said you should have special uh, regard to um, any harm that may be caused to the special features, which was slightly wrong, but I don't think very much will turn on it. But um, I just wanted to make sure I had set out the legislation in its full context. Thank you very much, Charles. Um, before we come to the vote, uh, just a couple of comments from, from me. Um, I suppose a couple of things that concern me that I suppose are a part really of what we're trying to achieve in the park. One is uh, good, clear rights of way. And I was uh, a little bit disappointed, I suppose, to see uh, marked on the Ordnance Survey map a, a clear route of right of way right through the site, which clearly is uh, unachievable at the moment. And uh, the building is not going to get in its way, but um, even after being built, it's going to be unachievable in the future. I don't know whether um, there is any way that 
um, sort of reinstatement of such a right of way might happen in the end. But, uh, but certainly I was pleased to see that this planning application we're looking at doesn't in any way to its detriment. So I don't know whether Lisa would make any comments on that. And then secondly, um, one of the issues that has been mentioned, and I think uh, when we were on site, Lisa dealt with it very well, but um, it might be worth just reinforcing it, is the whole question of uh, light pollution. We're obviously very concerned uh, in the National Park that our dark skies uh, are retained. And the last thing we want is uh, uh, large sources of light, which uh, spoil uh, that, that dark skies in one of our more remote parts of the park. Um, and I'd just like you to confirm, if you would, Lisa, what the situation is in terms of lighting. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I will just start off by showing um, members the existing obstruction on the public footpath. The public footpath rises from the public road here, goes up between the two buildings, and then will come out uh, to join the footpath at the top of the field. Um, this wall has been in existence for many, many years. The um, applicant has confirmed that the previous owners never had knowledge of anybody ever having walked this footpath. So the issue of the footpath is very, very long standing. You referred to reinstatement. I'm not sure what there is to reinstate if if there was ever a footpath that went along this line. That's not to um, uh, say that there wasn't a public footpath, but that any obstruction has been very, very long standing. So that was just to show a photograph of that, just to be clear. Um, and the second is in relation to light lighting. So if I can show you this here. So we've got the, the coverage of this yard here and the covering of the handling yard. These two uh, light, these are lights which currently um, illuminate the, the area. They will be removed because of the roof structures having to go in. There will be no other external lights applied to any of the either the existing structure or the structures that are go into place. So the light spill from these will be significantly um, ameliorated. And indeed, even without those, there are strip lights in, in existence inside this building at the moment. Um, any uh, light spill from that will also be mitigated by the fact that you'll have Yorkshire boarding on the, the wall of the, the back of the handling yard here. So um, that's wh where we're looking to um, improve the lighting uh, issue uh, as opposed to um, make it any worse. Um, you're looking to, um, to better the current situation, really. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Powell, you've got your hand raised. Is that an old hand or...? Um, apologies, Chair, that is. I, uh, That's okay, fine. To, uh, reverse. Well, I, thank, thank you very much. I can't see any other hands raised. So we do have a proposal uh, recommendation, which we find on page 68 of our report pack. Uh, if members want to turn to that, uh, the recommendation is to permit subject to conditions and the conditions are set out in the report. And um, we already have a proposer which is Councillor Roderick, and a seconder, Councillor McIntosh. So unless anybody else, I can see Charles Pellgate has raised his hand. So before we come to the vote, Charles, do you want to make a, a, a final comment on this? I do apologise for interrupting your flow, Chair. Um, I just wanted to take um, uh, Lisa back to the lighting condition. I think she advised members that there would be no external lighting. Just looking at the external, uh, at the lighting condition, it refers to external lighting being installed in accordance with um, a document which has a title uh, and a date there and no additional lighting, which I presume is over and above the lighting shown on that document will be installed. So it may, my reading of that, uh, and perhaps correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa, is that there may actually be some external lighting, but that we are happy with the extent of that lighting. I'm just finding that nano Charles. I just wanted to make sure that you were misdirected in relation to that issue. Further info lighting.
So the, the lighting plan referred to, um, so that condition refers to section three, I believe, of the further information document of uh, December 2020. Section three says that no additional lights are proposed to be installed on the exterior of either the covered yard or the covered sheep handling area. Plan two shows the existing positions of security lights on the yard. Um, and those are these two um, lights that I've pointed out to you previously. All existing lighting is sensor based and only lights up when something passes in front of the relevant sensor. The two lights marked on plan two will be removed to facilitate the building of the covered yard. Therein, they will no longer serve the purpose of illuminating the sheep yard. It is proposed that internal lights will be installed on the interior of the two new structures. This will assist the applicants when handling sheep in the dark. These lights will only be used in times of no natural light and they will be turned off after they have finished handling livestock there will be no occasion when these lights will be left on for a prolonged period of periods of time or overnight so i think what we what we were aiming to do is be specific about exactly what had been set out in section three of that document but there are yeah. to be no external lights in relation to this development no that's absolutely clear thank you very much for taking us back there lisa thank you very much for that clarity thank you for the presentation thank you members for your contributions to the debate. Um, so can we go to the vote then, please, Danny? We've had a proposal and a seconder to approve subject to conditions. Um, if we could go to that vote now. Yeah, Chair, I'm just going to launch the vote for 2018928FUL. Thank you very much. And um, that is unanimous, Chair. Four. <laughs> yes, I, pre I, I presume that's uh, approved in that case. Yes. Thank you, Danny. Thank you very much, members. Um, so we move on to item two under enclosure six, uh, which is for another application um, on the adjoining site at Danabulk. Um, but we do need to go through that with the same rigour as we've been through the previous application, because clearly it is a, a separate application and needs to be considered on its own merits, uh, as do all the planning applications that come before us. So um, I go again through the same process that we went through last time and invite Lisa Hughes as the case officer to talk to us about this application. And we'll go through uh, the uh, responses to that uh, uh, as we did previously. So Lisa. Thank you, Chair. So I don't intend to go through the whole of the uh, presentation again, although I will answer any questions as needs be. But this application now we are looking at, the previous vote was on the, the handling yard. This application is for the, the covering of the, the concrete yard here. Um, everything else in terms of landscape, drainage issues etc are or, or similar to that which I have already set out in my previous presentation. Is there anything further you would like me to provide? Well we'll ask the members shall we see whether if you, you want to stop sharing your screen Lisa and we'll see what members feel they need to see if anything, to understand this application uh, in relation to the other application. Um, this application stands on its own, does it? Or does it rely upon the other application being approved, which we have already done? Due, due to the fact that the appropriate assessment has been carried out and has applied conditions, which include um, the, 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 uh, the, the drainage and the, um, the fact that we're going to have a concrete wall uh, Sur surrounding that that end of the the, the two covered yards um, it would be very difficult to have the one development without the other development because of the containment issues um, so I think they are very connected yeah very connected but obviously <laughs> we need to make a, a decision and I'm sure it Charles has to make a, a decision of its own has to be made yes, yes. but whether in practical terms will make sure that we consider this one on its merits in the same way as we have done on the previous application 
Um, okay, well, members, um, we've had a very short presentation from Lisa, given the um, context of this application in relation to the last one. Um, would any members like to raise any questions in relation to the substance of the application, what's proposed? Charles, I can see your hand is raised again. Perhaps we'll bring you in first and then yeah, other members can then follow on if, if they wish to. My apologies once again. I just wanted to check the situation in relation to the speakers that spoke um, technically on the previous application, whether they needed to speak again in relation to this or whether they were happy that their comments applied to both uh, of the separate matters. We were going to cover that at the can I suggest that we, we, we uh, deal with that when we come to the speaker's item. I'm oh, very fine. happy to hear them I'm, again. I'm ahead of you. I I'm very happy to hear them again if they wish to um, to speak again. I mean, the the speaker that da the words that Danny read to us are quite short, so Danny can probably read those out again. Uh, just just to make sure we go through due process on both applications, I think we need to make sure that we're thorough. Um, so if members would bear with us, it may take us a little longer, but I think it's worth making sure we do that. Um, so any members, any got any questions of Lisa about the substance of this application? Edwin, uh, I see Councillor your hand raised. Councillor Roderick, I can see your hand is raised. Oh, thank you, Chair. That's... Um... The only comment I was going to make is to the same as on the last one. It's actually it comments would be exactly the same. It's um win win. Um and well, this can I just stop you there, Edwin? We're um yeah. we're looking at the actual nature of the application first before we go yeah. into the debate. So yeah, um, no, 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 no questions, no questions. No questions. Um uh, Councillor Howarth, have you got questions about the application? Yes, Chair. Could, could I um, could I just ask uh, the officer Lisa to just put that drawing back up again? Because I just I just want to ask about the the canopy there in the middle. It's the middle part we're discussing now, isn't it? The um, the connection between the two. It's the protrusion. Uh, I think it was the first drawing we had up there. Uh, there was just something I wasn't aware. Uh, uh, no, that, that first one you put up uh, with the two uh, black. That's it. See, see the the middle structure. That's what we're talking about now, isn't it? Um, the, is that protruding in the two barns there? Because we've got the red lines um, which are coming out more than the middle structures protrude in the other two. Is that is that correct? And what are uh, the black dots? What are the black dots? Are they are they tanks or? Yes, um, certainly. I'll, I'll cover that now. So this this is the plan which was I've I've lifted this plan off the one eight nine three one application. So the red line for that planning application includes the the access, but then it includes the area for the rainwater storage tank. So that's exactly what the the black dots are. We've got um two uh, all together, but one specifically for for this area of roof, and um that's why the red line protrudes. But the building itself follows. The, the the line of the existing building that's on the site there. Okay, that's super. There no problem. There. Right. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, um, Councillor McIntosh. Yes. Have... Thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, when it comes to the to the to the actual sort of debate, I'm happy to sort of move or second again. But I, I do have a question I wanted to sort of raise now, which, which relates to both, and that is on the rights of way, really, or the or the public footpath, I should say. Um, Obviously, looking at the way the route of the public footpath, it's going over a wall that appears to have been built there for a long time. And the, the wall adjoins the, the listed building just above where the mouse, mouse pointer is now. Now, it looks to me as though the rights of way path has been added after the wall was built. So it's obviously, to me, looks as though it's been perhaps been put in the wrong place. So I, I was wondering if we could perhaps ask Monmouthshire County Council to reevaluate reevaluate the suitability of this rights away and ascertain whether it's been put in the right place or not really because it's, it's obviously not suitable where it is at the moment because people can't walk along there and then jump out a six foot wall or whatever it is um so that's what i wanted to ask if possible really i know that monmouthshire county council have been approached by members of the public third parties in relation to this very issue um the problem of the footpath it's shown on the definitive map it's not usable in practice 
what exactly has been said and what Monmouthshire might want to do, I wouldn't like to comment on. But um, you've seen for yourself the exact situation that's on the ground there. Uh, and Monmouthshire okay. are aware of the problem with this footpath, yes. If they're aware, then that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that was the case, really. OK, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Councillor McIntosh. Uh, Charles Felgate, you've still got your hand raised. Yes, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to pick up with Councillor McIntosh. He indicated there that he would be happy to move second. Um, we haven't heard from the speakers yet in relation to this matter, so I just ask him to keep an open mind until such time as we have done that. Perhaps if he could confirm that he's got that message and understood it. Yes, of course. Yes, bearing that in mind. Sorry, I forgot we had to have the speaker speak again. Yes, right, thanks okay. so thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you to Councillor McIntosh. Um, Councillor Powell? Dr David, could I just check, there was reference made to, to Monmouthshire County Council in relation to the rights of way issue. Could we just have clarification that that actually, it, my understanding, if it's correct, is that is that the National Park is the rights of way authority and, and that it's a matter for, for this authority to, to determine whatever arrangements there might be around around the, 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 the footpath, any suggestion of its diversion or enhancement. Is that not a function that falls to this authority, not to to the local authority of Monmouthshire as a constituent authority. I may be misguided, but I thought that was the the, the position. I'm not sure of the exact wording around the, the whole arrangement that's there, but I have been to a meeting with our own public rights away people and Monmouthshire, and as I understand it, the uh, whilst we deal with applications for diversions, etc., as, as a matter of course, Monmouthshire were very much uh, uh, taking a I wouldn't say responsibility, but they seem to have the overarching control over what would happen in, in the instance of this particular footpath here. Um, I can't be clear on the absolute details, but Monmouthshire um, were, were very much involved in, in discussions. And uh, it's it's them who, if, if it were to be re reinstated, as I understood it, it would be Monmouthshire that would have to uh, force that issue. Okay. Well, I think it's a point for the clarification. But thank you very much for raising this point. I, I, I do feel, though, that it's not particularly material to our considerations this afternoon. We've seen from the photographs that the footpath in its current state is, is not, not one that could easily be reinstated in any shape or form. So I think if we make sure that this discussion is passed on to, to colleagues on both uh, our own um, rights of way team and also, if appropriate, to Monmouthshire County Council, that would be helpful. So. Um, I know our Director of Planning and Place is here, perhaps he would make sure that that comment is passed on to the appropriate officers. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, um, members. I think um, that is all the comments at this stage. Thank you, all the questions. So we can move on then to uh, the next stage of the process, um, where again, um, we have opportunity for public speakers uh, to speak to us. And uh, Danny, um, your um, words, I think, were quite short. So I think we just be quite good to remind members uh, of what was said by Mark Lloyd before we give Jack Hanbury the option and Eddie Watkins as well the option of coming back to us in relation to this application. So, Danny, would you like to just read out again and remind Committee of Mark Lloyd's contribution? Thank you. The comments were as follows. The farm continues to cause pollution and contribute to flooding and is an eyesore in an otherwise beautiful valley. Expansion of its animal holding facilities would appear to facilitate the continuation and potential extension of its appalling practices. Thank you very much. And uh, if Jack Hanbury is still with us this afternoon, Jack, would you like to come in again in relation to this application, please? I can't see him in the list any longer, Chair. So it would seem that he's dropped out. We have got a copy of his speech, right. if you'd like me to reread it. Um, because he's dropped out of the meeting, um, I just take a legal view. I, I do not particularly want to, to go through that again unless we feel that legally we should pursue that line. I think members have heard that quite clearly expressed previously. I think legally we 
Poss- possibly should um, chair. I, 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 I too am reluctant to take you through it, but the only concern in my mind is if Mr. Hanbury um, has perhaps um, exited through no fault of his own through an, an, an internet connection problem or something like that, in which case yeah, I would not want him to fine. suggest that he hadn't been heard. Okay, well, members, if you'll bear with us, we will just have that read out to us uh, by Danny uh, so that we've got the full information from those who wish to express it uh, before we come to consider the application. Thank you. I am Jack Hanbury of the Pontypool Park Estate. This is the third time this application has been submitted to the Planning Committee. The two previous times the consent was quashed by judicial review. To quash a consent is not a mere wrist slap, it is a formal declaration that the consent was illegal. And yet this is a third application resubmitted and seemingly seemingly unchanged seven weeks after the previous consent was declared illegal. What does this say about Brecon Beacons National Parks procedures and its respect for the law? (coughs) This application site is egregious and for its perhaps surprising land management, the number of sheep on the holding, the density of the stocking, the soil erosion, the runoff, the substantial buildings, the heritage impact, the environmental impact, the impact on the YSAC, the obstruction of the footpath all make this farm management and the application highly unusual. The two successful challenges are not surprising. It is surprising that Brecon Beacons National Park has allowed matters to get to this stage and may not adequately have regulated the previous consents nor enforced against any breaches. This third application should be dismissed. It does no service to the National Park nor to sheep farming in Wales. Members of the committee are aware of the statutory purpose of the National Park. I suggest the National Park should not entertain any application which undermines the message that red meat production in Wales is sustainable and that our customers may buy it with confidence. Thank you very much, uh, Danny, for reading that. And finally, uh, Ellie Watkins, if you are still with us, do you wish to speak again? Um, If that's okay for the avoidance of doubt, I will speak again. Yes, absolutely. Yes, you have three minutes uh, as previous to speak on this application. Thank you, Ellie. Ladies and gentlemen, we go again. Thank you for your time attending site today, and I hope you found the visit useful. It was ultimately it, it ultimately enlightened you on the proposals, and that they are as simple as I have been saying all along. I do wonder if we're reaching a situation akin to something we might see on Clarkson's farm, albeit the planning committee would be shown in a much better light in this instance. It is truly beneficial that you were able to see the site on such a drizzly day such as today, as you can see where we're coming from. This application is to cover the existing yard and the handling system adjacent. They are being they are in situ and being used daily by the applicants. If these structures were not passed and subsequently not built, my clients would still be using these facilities daily because the business relies on them for all the necessary tasks required to handle sheep. And having seen the site today, and especially the farmyard topography, you can perhaps now understand there are no alternative sites on the facility for replacements. The ruse will enable improvement in animal welfare, going above and beyond what is required by law, by protecting both the sheep and the applicants from the weather. And the site is notorious for strong winds. The application is fully in line with changing climate change and environmental policies. I cannot pretend that these structures are complicated and they are more than what they seem on the face of it. They are simple, small steel portal frame buildings to cover existing facilities. They will share stanchions between the buildings and the existing livestock building, and they are simply infill on an existing and established farmyard. There is nothing more to them than that, yet due to all the legal weavings, I worry that the overall simplicity is being lost. So it was excellent for you to visit the site today to see it really was that simple. They are there to reduce the pollution risk and improve animal welfare that is all the integrity of my clients is constantly being questioned by self-appointed experts and for the avoidance of doubt they operate a well-established business farm assured and operating all within the rules and regulations that are required of them we have relied on experts to consider things such as heritage and they deem the proposal satisfactory the screening mitigates most impacts let alone the additional planting there is a clear indication in welsh planning policy and agricultural that these sort of yard coverings are encouraged to prevent agricultural pollution. That is ultimately what this boils down to. And last time I didn't dwell, a why, dwell on why we're reconsidering the application that has been determined twice before. But there is an elephant in the room and we are all being bullied here by people who do not understand the National Park, that, that, that don't understand it's not a fixed view and it develops and it changes. People with more resources and more time and self-appointed experts in sheep farming um, So I implore the committee to pass the application as they've already done before. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Ellie. Um, so we've heard now um, all the representations from external parties. We've also had a, a very good presentation uh, from Lisa, very short, but to the point. So we've had a chance to see what is being proposed. Uh, so now is the time for us to have our deliberations. But before we do so, uh, Charles, you've got your hand raised again. <laughs> so can I, can I invite you to come in before we come into our debate? Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chair. You'll be sick of the sight of us, uh, sight of me shortly. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate Section 66 duty that we talked about in relation to the previous application, which also applies here. Um, and uh, also to reiterate that we had had the response from NIW, um, which also applies in relation to this application. Uh, and hopefully that is the last you'll hear from me. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Charles, for your contributions this afternoon. They've been very apposite, I think, for our meeting today. Um, OK, well, I've got um, Councillor Powell, first of all, then Councillor Roderick and then Councillor McIntosh. Uh, Councillor Powell, is that an old hand or is that... You're Move. muted. Sorry, you're muted. Chair, yeah, thank you, Chair. That, that makes it a hat trick and I shan't be contributing any, any further, I, I, I suspect, during this... Uh, item. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Roderick, um, I stopped you in mid-course, mid-sentence last time, so carry on. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. You always have a very difficult job to do, but you do it remarkably well. And we all learn so much from your experience. So you're not allowed it. No, my, my opinions are exactly the same as before, Chair. Uh, it's a win-win situation. And after all, as um, the Welsh uh, early advised Welsh government are encouraging agriculture to do these schemes to cover these yardings to keep away to keep the um, <coughs> to keep away dirty water runoff, um, and I strongly propose that uh, we support this um, scheme. Yeah, to go on. Thank you, Councillor Roderick. Um, Councillor McIntosh, you've also got your hand raised. Yes, thank you, Chair. Well, first of all, I'd like to confirm that I have treated this one on its merits separately to the first application. And after having heard what the um, or the objector comments and obviously the agent, um, I'm minded to second this application, if that's OK. I, w I would raise a, one other point, and that is <clears throat> in the previous application, I said that I was disappointed that we had to go in and conduct a site visit and I, i'm still of that opinion I, I i do accept the comments that as we had to conduct a site visit or as we had to hear this up committee we conducted a site visit which was valuable to us in, be, in being able to come to a conclusion i think the point i'm making is that this really should have always been delegated to officers we have a fantastic team of officers who are perfectly capable of determining applications like this and i think that's that's the point i was making really so um Overall, I'm happy to second this. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank you, Councillor McIntosh. Obviously, um, there is a discussion between myself and the deputy with um, our planners about the nature of applications and whether we feel they're appropriate to be taken to committee or, or not. We, we have certain rules regarding those, but there is a certain amount of discretion and uh, we'll bear in mind your comments. But I am keen that, that members do engage, particularly when there is considerable local concern as, as we've uh, had in this application and I think I think we need to be um, engaged very much making sure that um, members of the public feel that we've given due diligence due consideration as an authority to such applications and uh, so in that sense I'm I'm pleased that we are considering this today because it, it has raised a number of uh, of concerns locally thank you um, Councillor Williams. I think you're muted, Hugh. Yeah, sorry, Chair. Uh, just for the sake of uh, continuity and correctness, perhaps, can, can the officer confirm that all the previous discussion regarding clean and foul drains and the separation of, of waters uh, applies to this second application uh, and also that the, the tree planting will, will 
uh, um, um, well, there is a planted area for native trees that will uh, serve uh, to sort of uh, mask this area as well. And perhaps I could also ask, does the lighting uh, conce uh, sort of concept apply to this as well as previously discussed? There is a lot, Chair, but uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Yes, I think I, this relates very much to what I was saying about whether this application stands in its own merits. Obviously, uh, we're expecting that both would be uh, put into effect, but, but clearly we have an application in front of us. We need to make sure that if it was built in its, in its, on its own without the, the, the covered handling yard, that um, it wouldn't in itself cause uh, harm in a, in a, in a physical um, planning sense. OK, Lisa, perhaps you could just talk to us about that. Thank you, Councillor, and thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, so the landscaping plan for each scheme on its own is the same, and that is that this area, it's actually further extended than I've been identifying previously, this area is for planting with native broadleaf trees. And it's not, the, it's not a square, it's sort of a triangle like that. And then we have another triangle, and then we have... Uh, a, a strip oops a, where have I gone a strip all along here coming up to the side of the building here so that's all the, the planting to the side and then we have the additional tree planting on this bank here and the foul water yes from the um, concrete yard would go to the effluent tank uh, below ground and Rainwater storage would be in this tank here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. And lighting, just for the sake of. Uh, yeah, lighting. Uh, yeah, so the external lighting would be removed from the existing building here, and there would be no external lighting proposed on the the roof cover. What you would be lacking is any Yorkshire boarding, which comes from the benefit of this building here, but um, the internal lights aren't intended to be used um, overnight, um, and you do have the benefit of the Yorkshire boarding to, to this side here, but um, yeah, no external lighting proposed for the development. Thank you, Lisa and Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't see any other hands raised. We have a, a recommendation on page 134 to permit this application subject to conditions. Councillor Roderick has proposed that we uh, go along with that recommendation and Councillor McIntosh has seconded it. So I suggest anybody, unless anybody else has got any comments, we go straight to the vote. So let's go to the vote. Danny, please. OK, I'll launch that now. And that again is unanimous for the permission of the uh, application. Thank you very much. Uh, so that uh, recommendation to approve subject to conditions is carried. Now we've been going for an hour and uh, 40 minutes. I think probably a comfort break would be uh, uh, welcomed. So I suggest that before we move on to our next application, if that's OK, we have a 10 minute break and start up again at 10 to 4. Is that all right for everyone? Chair, I will bid you fa farewell now. I said this would be the last time you heard from me and uh, right. it, it just uh, it just upon me to say goodbye and to thank members for their careful consideration right. of, of those yeah. two matters. Um, and uh, if there's anything further needed, you, you know where to find me. Uh, thanks ever so much. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your contribution. Very, very helpful for us, I'm sure, this afternoon. Yeah. My pleasure as always, Chair. Good. OK, see you in 10 minutes. I can remind members to turn off their cameras and their microphones while they're on their break, just so that nothing untoward happens.
basically helped me lose about seven or eight stone alongside. Uh, just to advise, we are still live streaming, so if you can set up your cameras on and mics on mute until we're ready, and I will try and call in. Uh, I've got Scott back, and I will try and call Julian and Liz back in. Let me know, uh, Danny, when sufficient members have returned. We'll make a make a start. We are on ten to four on my clock. Yeah, I'm just trying to see if I can get. Uh, I think Jeremy is back in the meeting. Yep, I can see Jeremy on screen. Uh, it's just Liz. I'm waiting to come back in. I thought you forgot about us, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to take my mic off chair and I'm going to try and call uh, Liz because she's not rejoining the meeting. Okay. Uh, Chair, is it one o'clock you and I tomorrow, isn't it? Uh, I believe it is. Mm. A reminder, though, members, we are still live streaming, so can we be careful what we say? For anyone viewing this, we're just waiting for a member who was unable to join us for our earlier items, but is joining now. We want to make sure, obviously, that we involve all the members who wish to participate in this meeting if we can. What's it, Chair? Everyone is now back in the meeting. Good. Okay. Chrysler, welcome back to Planning Committee on this uh, day, 21st of March, 2023. Um, again, good to see everyone returned and good for those members who were not participating in the earlier items to be back with us. Uh, now, before we get on to our next application, um, I've got two hands raised. I guess that's probably in relation to this application. So first of all, Councillor Powell. Thank you, Chair. Um, unfortunately, um, I, I'm going to have to leave the, the the latter portion of this meeting. And as as you're aware, I have 
and um, raised my declaration of interest, which I shall duly complete, but I shall be unable to return to the meeting uh, after the determination of that item, for which apologies. Um, I, I'm experiencing some technical difficulties, which uh, relates to the, uh, the, the the visibility of my hand and uh, and issues around lowering and raising it, but I, I'll need to uh, seek advice separately about that, and that's a matter I don't need to uh, bore other people with. But thank you very much for uh, your consideration uh, during the course of this meeting, and uh, my very best wishes and apologies for having to leave. Well, Jochen Vaar, and uh, we, we look forward to seeing you again uh, at the next meeting. Thank you. Jochen Vaar. Um, and Davina, Davina Powell. Yep, so um, I'm going to have to declare an interest as well, uh, just because of the relationship to the applicants. So um, I'm going to have to leave the meeting. Um, right. <laughs> OK, well, we'll see you later, hopefully. For the yep. last items. Yes, OK, well, thank you, Davina. And we'll see you when um, we've completed this item. If somebody would let Davina know, obviously, when uh, when we get to that point. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave now then. OK, bye. OK, thank you very much. Bye, bye. Right, I can uh, confirm uh, they've both left and okay. I will okay. call them Thank back at the much. right time. Thank you very much, Danny. Well, we, we're moving on to item three um, under this uh, enclosure, uh, enclosure six, uh, which is another application, this time uh, an application at Pen Penarreal Farm. And the case officer for this is Rhys Pritchard, who I believe is uh, on the call and is going to present to us. So, Rhys, uh, without any more ado, please carry on and tell us about the application. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can everyone see a PowerPoint? Yes, indeed. Ideal. Perfect. Thank you. This is an application for the erection of a rear extension at Penn Rail Farm. The works will include the extension and alteration to the previously converted barn attached to the property, as well as other, as well as other associated internal and external works. The proposal is considered for approval and has been presented at the planning committee as the application has been submitted by an agent for a relative, by an agent for a relative of a member of the planning team. The site is located with an open countryside and defined by the local development plan. The farm is located approximately three kilometres south of the settlement of Talga. The property, which is the subject of this application, is located on the southwestern side of the site. The adjacent highway runs parallel to the side of the property and two separate accesses are located either side of the property. There is one nearby farm near to the site, which is located to the east of the farm. There are no other properties in the immediate vicinity. The proposed two storey extension will be located off the eastern elevation and will extend out slightly beyond the existing footprint of the property. This extension will be finished in large cladding and will have a slate roof which will match the existing roof. Anthracite aluminium windows and glazed doors are proposed on this part of the development and for all other windows at the property. Works are also proposed the attached barn conversion. The footprint will remain very similar and the barn will remain finished in corrugated metal. The wall on the eastern elevation will be finished in bagged and painted rubble stone, which will match the proposed walls of the house. Glazed full length windows are proposed on the eastern elevation and will be set back from the face of the cart opening. On the western elevation, aluminium doors and windows are proposed as per the schedule for the rest of the property. Other external works are proposed which will improve the uniformity of the property and alterations are proposed to the rear garden to improve access. The new extension will house an open plan kitchen and dining area on the ground floor and the first floor extension will help facilitate a change in the bedroom schedule. No increase in bedrooms are proposed as a result of this development. The garage, which, is, which currently occupies the ground floor of the barn conversion, will be upgraded to include a living and kitchen area and the residential accommodation above will be retained. Strategy policy, policy CYD LP1 of the Local Development Plan sets out the forms of development that are considered acceptable within countryside locations. Criterion 1 refers to the proposals that capitalise on improving the existing building stock within countryside locations. With this development, it appears that the net increase 
in original property size will it, property size will exceed 30 percent however on balance it is deemed that the development scale is acceptable as the new extension is acceptable in size and scale and will utilize existing floor space in its erection consultation was sent to the national parks heritage officer for building conservation on account of the attached barn amendments to the scheme are requested which have been supplied no objection is raised to the development regarding building conservation it is concluded that the proposed size scale and design of the extension are appropriate therefore there will be no adverse impacts on visual immediacy to the surrounding area the site is located within the river y catchment the application has been screened in accordance with natural resources wales's advice for planning applications within the river special area of conservation catchment and it has been concluded that no, that no likely significant effect on the SAC are anticipated as a result of this development. Biodiversity enhancements was, were submitted as part of this application, which have been deemed appropriate. A BAT report dated July 2022 was submitted with the application. Consultation was sent to the National Park Ecologist in relation to the proposed scheme, who raised no objection to the proposed development, subject to the imposition of planning conditions and informative notes. Due to the nature of the site, there is ample space for car parking within the site and no occupancy increase is proposed. Powys County Council, as Highways Authority, were consulted as part of this application and no objections were raised. The development is not located near to any nearby properties and therefore it's considered unlikely that the proposed development would have a detrimental impact on neighbour amenity. Therefore, in conclusion, the application is recommended for approval, subject to the imposition of planning condition and informative notes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rhys, um, for your presentation. Um, short but comprehensive, um, just what is needed. Thank you very much. And members will be aware that this has come to us because of the connection of one of the officers with the application. Otherwise, it would have been considered under delegated power. So that's the reason why we're considering it this afternoon. And uh, before we get to a debate on the merits of the scheme and the proposals, first of all, any questions of Rhys in relation to the report and in relation to what he's shown us this afternoon? I don't see any hands raised. Uh, in which case, can I suggest that we move on then? Uh, Danny, can you just confirm there are no public speakers for this? You are correct, Chair. There are no public speakers. Thank you very much. Uh, bearing in mind there are no public speakers, um, would the members now like to merit a uh, debate on the merits of the application before we come to a vote? Thank you. Mm. Apart from that groan, Chair, there seem to be no public speakers. <laughs> I was looking at the Heritage Officer report. Uh, it's it's me. It is. Uh, <laughs> uh, would uh, the officer like to comment on the Heritage Officer's report because it is in a sensitive uh, spot and uh, <laughs> and also I picked up on external lighting because we are concentrating on external lighting across the park because its significance. I have got a heavy cold. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, Reese, would you like to comment on those things? Uh, in regard to external lighting, um, there's none proposed and a condition has been um, added to the permission um, to uh, ensure this is, uh, remains. And um, I think there was no objection um, by the heritage officer. Um, there were some concerns around uh, materials and things and those being resolved and... Uh, any um, concerns have been removed and no objection is um, made by the heritage officer to the scheme now. Okay. Um, you happy with that response? Uh, Councilor yes, Lincoln? Chair, and uh, despite my uh, loud groan, I, I'm happy to go along with the officer's recommendation unless you, feel, okay. you deem it's too early to, to do so. Yeah, no, but, uh, no, for I have all means, if you wish to propose, then that's fine. Yeah. I, and we'll, and we'll see whether others have got comments before we... Yeah, but it, it is following a comprehensive report, and I thank the officer for the comprehensive report as well. I think he should be acknowledged for that. It's not just a question of what he has said today. Thank you. Okay. Now, any, any other members like to make any comments on this application? Or, indeed, uh, anybody like to second 
the, um, the proposal uh, from Councillor Williams that we go for a recommendation. Uh, Council, um, John Hunt, I've got. I, I, I've got. I'd like to second it. If it and in doing so, I'd just like to ask: Do we have any say or facility to question sustainable energy in, uh, integration into plans such as this? Is that anything we can encourage in approval? Um, I wouldn't be sure. Would anyone have anything to comment on that one? Gareth, would you be able to respond maybe? Um, not not from not from the planning perspective, Chair. I, I think potentially bit the building building regs would come in in terms of energy efficiency. Um, Okay, fine. I I go for approval. Then I'd say have to get a vote on that. Thank you very much. So we've got a seconder now. Any other members wish to speak, make comment, or shall we take it straight to the vote? Well, I've got no other hands raised here, so uh, I think we go straight to the vote. Uh, Hugh William, Councillor Hugh Williams proposed. Uh, John Hunt seconded, and we'll. Um, take that to the vote now. Thank you, Danny. Here we go. I've launched the vote. If you can vote accordingly. And that would seem to be unanimous vote for the application. Thank you very much, uh, Danny. Um, thank you, members, for your comments. And we'll move on then to our next item. Um, items that we'll find on pages 163 onwards. Um, these are matters for us to note, so I won't be taking a vote through to the end of these these items. Um, but if people have members have comments to make, then please um, raise your hands in the normal way, and we'll take them up as we go. So um, let's move on then, shall we, to page 163 to 166. Here we have uh, the items that uh, our officers have been uh, considering on our behalf. Their decisions are made by the National Park Authority, but made by the officers uh, without involvement of uh, planning committee. But nevertheless, they're brought to us so that we have a vision of what, uh, what is going on and particular opportunity if there are any questions Obviously, officers will not necessarily be prepared unless you give advance warning that you want to raise issues in relation to these. But um, if you have got any items that you'd like to raise questions to, then uh, please flag them up and perhaps I'll <coughs> come back to you afterwards in relation to them. So um, first, first series of um, uh, delegated matters are 163 to 166. So any member comments any any uh, raised hands in relation to those no thank you very much we'll take those as being noted thank you and then agricultural notifications 167 and 168 well it's just 167 we just have the one agricultural notification any raised hands i can't see any thank you members and then we move on to the fringe applications these are applications which are um, right on the boundary of the National Park. They're not applications that the National Park Authority itself will be considering, will be determining, but they're applications being determined by other authorities on our doorstep, as it were. But because they are so uh, significant or they are so close to our boundary, we have an opportunity to be consulted as uh, consultees and to express our views on the applications. Normally, these are done through delegated powers. Uh, occasionally, there may be applications coming in which members will wish to comment on as part of the process as the officers draw up their uh, responses to those authorities. Um, these particular ones, um, would you like to talk us through those? Um, is Div has Davina returned? That's the first, uh, the first question. Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, I don't know whether you, you want to talk through these or Gareth uh, in terms of their significance to us. So are there any issues on the fringe applications? 
sorry i'll just i've just come back in so i'll just get, skip to the fringe one yes I'm, I'm sorry about this okay don't we? put you on the spot enclosure seven item three page one six nine i think it's worth just mentioning these fringe ones because um, they are significant on our boundary and uh, we're not looking for a full um a full report on them but nevertheless just a comment as to um how significant they are and what we are, what, how we've responded to them. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, the first fringe is to do with shepherd's hats. So it's only pretty small. So I wouldn't say that's something to note. Um, I'm just looking at... The second one now. Ah, this is yeah, Hobbit style style houses in Trathlong. Um, so yeah, nothing particularly to pick up as part of the comments. Um, you know, we've highlighted a formal objection due to lack of information, mostly. So um, that will play out. Okay, I don't think the others are, are, so, are so very substantial, are they? So, uh, if no. members have got any queries on those, I suggest rather than raising them now, um, pass those through to Davina and her team um, who can come back to us on those. But uh, I think the fringe ones are often uh, significant applications, um, but we don't necessarily have all the information to, to talk to them in detail at committee. Um, then we move on to. Um, our appeals report, pages 177 to 186. So you'll note that comprises, first of all, a summary of the appeals that have been lodged. Um, these are appeals that have made been made in relation to planning applications and listed building uh, applications in general, which have been turned down by the authority, mostly under delegated powers, and the applicants have then taken them to appeal. And you can see a number there um, which are, are being put in for appeal, and, and two appeal decisions which appear on page 178 and the decision letters which come out from um, the, uh, <coughs> the inspectorate um, are copied in here and we can see uh, the results of those two. Um, one of which was successful from the uh, perspective of the National Park Authority and one of which was one uh, against our uh, recommendations previously. So um, any members like to make any comments or indeed officers about either of these applications that have gone through the appeal process? Yeah, yeah thank you Chair. So if a, an appeal is allowed, how much does that cost us? So, yeah, I was going to come in on the one that was allowed. So that, that was an appeal against um, a certificate for proposed lawful use. So it, that was an interpretation of the general permitted development order. So it's quite a technical, um, do I require planning permission or not in accordance with these regulations? So uh, the inspector came to a different interpretation of the regulations and said, actually, you don't need planning permission for this. In terms of what that's cost us, um, time, I guess, officer time dealing with the appeal and, um, uh, you know, determining the certificate to refuse it. So there's no financial sort of penalty? So, I, I no, there's no cost application that went with that appeal as far as okay. I'm aware. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I can't see any other hands raised, so I'll take that. Those reports as being noted. Again, if you want to follow those up with officers um, afterwards, is probably the best time to do that. Um, our next uh, enclosure item is enclosure seven, item five, and I note that there are reasons why this uh, we consider should be treated as a, a confidential matter and to go into into the confidential session. And so, um, Mark, can I bring you in at this point to? Um, refer us to the relevant um, legal um, 
uh, way of of, of, of of carrying this out. Thank you. You're muted, Mark. So you're just like a goldfish. My apologies. Thank you for commenting, Danny. Um, regarding items five, six, and then eight, they're all confidential matters. And uh, consequently, when we go into private session, we won't then be coming out. Um, we'll deal with all matters that remain on the agenda. So in relation to, um, to each of those items, um, separately and individually, I'm asking for a resolution for items five, six of enclosure seven and then enclosure eight enforcement reports. I'm asking for a resolution from members that pursuant to section 100A of the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded, excluded from the meeting for the following item of business on the grounds there would be disclosure to them of exempt information as they find in paragraphs 12, 13, 17 and 18 of part four, schedule 12A of the above act as applicable and the public interest in maintaining the exemption outweigh the public interest in disclosing that information. So these are these are currently live matters before you. Um, that's the resolution I'm looking for, a proposer and a seconder, please, Chair. Thank you very much, Mark. Proposer and seconder, please, for those. So, oh, Chair, it, can I ask that it's done individually, so for item oh, yes, right, five, okay. item six, and then enclosure eight. Thank you. Right, OK, well, we'll deal with items five and six under enclosure seven first. If we could have a vote on that, but we need a proposer and a seconder, if I might, please. I'll propose that. I can see um, Liz. My second, Chair. Oh, right. Sorry. Did you catch catch those, Danny? Who that was? Oh, because we're just frantically rewriting two more. All oh, right. Votes um, at the moment. So I've got one ready to launch for the first one because we've well, just looking, taken the vote to go into confidential session, but. If we're going to do them individually, did you pick up the proposer and second? No, I didn't. The proposer and the second for the first one is who? I'll do that. I think it's probably easier if you put your hands up. Uh, then, then we can all see. I I can't see everybody on the screen. That's the problem. Right. I, I'm second a chair. I don't know who proposed it. It's Councillor Jeremy Davis. Okay, right. I've got Liz. Are you right. proposing and Jeremy Davis is second okay. in? I can very launch much. the first poll. Thank you. Very good. Okay, well, by all means do that. You will have to scroll down for this one because there's obviously quite a lot of text in there. And that is unanimous. Thank you. And so we need now to have a proposer and a seconder for item enclosure eight, also to go into the uh, confidential. I'm mode. happy to propose that. Uh, yeah. No, it's not coming up on mine. Yes, please. Sorry. Have we got a proposer and a seconder, Danny? John Hunt uh, to propose. I've got John Hunt proposing and Simon Emmanuel seconding. Thank you very much. And so on that basis, when you're ready, um, Emma is going to. So this vote will be in relation to item six, yeah? This one's, in, I, I, no, this. Enclosure eight. Uh, enclosure eight, this is. Okay. Not, so item seven, seven vote six that I had. Together, I think, and the enclosure eight we're taking separately. Okay, that's fine. Here we go. I'll launch this one now and it should be on your screens. And that is unanimously for. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, members. Well, at this point, um, we uh, conclude the public element of our meeting this afternoon. And uh, for all those who've been watching over the video link or looking at the recording, um, we, we say this is the conclusion of our planning committee for today. Uh, we wish you well and maybe we'll see you on another occasion. Thank you.
Okay, bear with me two seconds. I'll just confirm when you're no longer live. 